David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief introduction to an approach to estimating volatility that is extremely popular. It's called GARCH 1-1. GARCH is short for Generalized Autoregressive Conditional Heteroscedastic Model. And to show you how it works, I'm using the same data I used before, and that is a short series of exchange rates between the euro and the dollar ending on February 6th, where the exchange rate was pro approximately $1.44 to 1 euro. And now just to compare the GARCH to the model I've done before, here in pink is the exponentially weighted moving average. And so we calculated the variance let's say sigma sub n is an estimate of today's variance is equal to or a function of two lagged variable variables yesterday's variance and yesterday's squared return and in the exponentially weighted moving average we weighted each of them the lagged variance term is weighted by lambda the lagged squared return is weighted by 1 minus lambda. So these weights have to sum by 1. Here's one weight, and here's another weight. So the exponentially weighted moving average was a function where we estimate the variance by lagging two variables, variance and squared return. The GARCH is going to add one more term, and that's the essential difference. The essential difference is that GARCH is going to incorporate mean reversion by adding a third term. And so it's trying to model the idea that the variance, if it strays from a long run average, it will be somewhat sticky or persistent to that long run average. So I'll move the exponentially weighted moving average formula, formula out of the way. And then what I have here is the formula for GARCH 1-1. And so we have, again, an estimate for today's variance is equal to three terms. In yellow is the new term. And this is, well, first, each of the terms have a weight. So you recall in the exponentially weighted moving average, we had two weights, lambda and one minus lambda. The weights must sum to one. In the GARCH, we're going to have three weights. And they are represented by the Greek letters. So gamma is a weight, alpha is a weight, beta is a weight. So gamma is the weight assigned to this variable, which is the long run average. So if we give the model, if we specify the long run average variance, then this is the essential difference of the GARCH over the exponentially weighted moving average. We've added this term. And by adding this, we are saying we like we expect that the variance will be somewhat persistent or will be pulled toward this long run variance. And the degree to which it is pulled toward that variance is called persistence. And it's going to depend on the weight that we assign to the long run variance. But that's really the key difference. Aside from the change in notation, we are really back to the exponentially weighted moving average meaning we've got alpha for a weight multiplied by a lagged squared return, just like we did with the exponentially weighted moving average. And we've got beta, the third weight, multiplied by the lagged variance. So again, like in the exponentially weighted moving average, we have a recursion idea. This estimate of today's variance is a function of the variance on the day before. So it, there's a recursive. The weights must sum to 1. So gamma plus alpha plus beta need to sum to 1. And now, so just to show you an example, I have the exchange rate data in this column. I'm not going to show you all the column data, but there's just about 30 rows below the exchange rates. And then we have the periodic returns, which are simply continuously compounded returns. So we're taking the natural log of this exchange rate divided by the exchange rate on the day before. That gives us a daily periodic return. Then we square the return. And this, so notice the color coding. I squared the return and that in fact is going to be this u squared, this right here. And then I've also calculated a, a variance 
a trailing variance and so I won't go into that calculation I've done that in a prior tutorial but suffice to say this is the variance on n minus 1 so in blue that plugs into this part right here so now if I go up to the Garch the one thing I need is a long run variance so I just plugged in a number 0.0035 percent and remember it's the average variance and where did I where did I get this well in my case I simply took the average of the series so there are approaches to estimating the parameters that I'll talk about later but right now I just plugged in 0.0035 percent and now notice I've got all three key factors that I need to plug into the model I've got the long run variance in yellow I've got the lagged squared return in green I've got the lagged variance in blue I simply need to multiply them by the weights and so again I'm just making up the weights here but these are the three weights gamma alpha beta they do need the sum to one so I just arbitrarily said gamma's five alpha's five beta's ninety percent such that if I zero this out I can now implement this uh, GARCH11 model by multiplying the long run variance times gamma so I'm giving it a weight then I'm going to add alpha which is the weight multiplied by yesterday's squared return and then I'm going to add beta which is the weight multiplied by yesterday's variance and that's all I need to do I hit enter and you can see that gives me the GARCH11 estimate this formula right here notice it's a variance again so I would need to take the square root to get the standard deviation let's not forget that notice that at 0.00333 percent it is slightly higher than the exponentially weighted moving average well that's because my long run variance is higher and I do have a little bit of weight pulling the series toward this higher long run variance so that's why this garch is a little bit higher it's getting pulled it is to some degree persistent to the long run average variance so that's an introduction to garch 11 this is David Harper the Bionic Turtle thank you for your time